If you're a novice jazz player, you probably want your playing to sound something like this. But it inevitably ends up sounding more like this. In today's lesson, we're gonna talk about why articulation is really the secret sauce to making your feel more authentic as a jazz musician. Today's lesson is a bit of a follow-up to something I posted way back in the summer of 2020 about the common pitfalls that musicians face if they're not necessarily the most confident jazz players when they go to play with a big band or any sort of jazz ensemble. If you haven't watched that one yet, I encourage you to go down to the description and click on the link. Not only does it have some great content, but I think it has kind of an entertaining intro to that video. The feel of swing is really made up of a number of components. It has to do with, are we all feeling the quarter note in the same place? Are we subdividing triplets? Things of that nature. However, one of the biggest missing components for many players is articulation and thinking about how articulation affects swing. Okay, before we get into some examples, I cannot overemphasize how important it is to go listen to this. Yeah, we're gonna talk about some quote unquote rules today, but if you do not go listen to the original sources on this material, you will never sound authentic as an improviser or even just playing this style in an ensemble. I repeat that, never will you sound authentic playing this style if you do not do a significant amount of listening and pay attention to this sort of stuff. If you're not sure what to go listen to and need a starting place, get the album Basie Straight Ahead. This is the Count Basie Orchestra, and this is my go-to example of how to play swing in the ensemble with students. Learn how to sing all of these tunes. You should be able to sing these songs just like they're any other song that you know with great articulation, great feel. If you do that, you will be so much closer to being a swinging jazz musician. Now, on the topic of singing, today we're gonna to talk quite a bit about some syllables that we can use to work on this stuff. There are three syllables. There's a da, D-A-H, a do, D-O-O, and a dot with a T on the end of it, D-A-H-T. These are pretty common across a lot of jazz education and even among jazz musicians. So we can agree upon articulation before we even get to the horn. If we can make it sound swinging and have a great feel singing it, we have a much better chance of going to the horn and make it happen. Now, Conversely, if we cannot make it swing and feel good with just our voices, it's gonna be pretty difficult on the horn. Now, we're not talking about pitch actors here necessarily, we're just talking about feel and articulation. Now, the name of this lesson is Rules for Jazz Articulation, but these are not rules in reality. They are guidelines. Some of them are gonna be pretty firm guidelines where almost every time you see these types of rhythms, you're going to wanna to treat them that way, but there are exceptions for all this stuff, and there are even a few things that kind of exist outside of the things we're gonna talk about. So when we talk about rules, we just wanna think about it as kind of rules of the road. There are exceptions, but these are gonna to help to guide us in the right direction. All right, rule number one. When we have an eighth note line, we are going to treat those legato. If we were singing them, we would sing with a do syllable unless anything is affected by one of these other kind of rules we're going to talk about. Let's look at an example. Now conversely, if I played all of that a little more separated, you're gonna hear it's not gonna sound quite as swing. It's gonna sound maybe a little overcooked, overswung, kind of like I'm trying to swing. And I clearly still have swung eighth notes, but it just doesn't sound as authentic or as inside the style. All right, rule number two. If we have a single offbeat eighth note followed by any other note value, it is going to receive an accent or a DAH. Let's check out a couple examples of this. Now you're gonna notice that I've put all of the notes that these rules affect in red.
Now you can hear there are a couple other accents in these examples. We'll talk about those in a moment. All right, rule number three. Offbeat eighth notes and quarter notes that are followed by rests are going to get an accent and be short, meaning dot, D-A-H-T. And when we talk about short here, we don't want dip, super short. We want sort of a short, fat note. So if we think about connecting this with our voice, if we look at the first example, I have an accent, I'm tied over, and then those quarter notes, I chose to make them short, dots. We'll talk about that in a moment. But then in the second measure, I have do, dot, dot, long, short, short. That is just as classic as it gets when we're talking about jazz articulation. So that whole two measure phrase would be one, two, three. Da, dot, 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 do, dot, dot. Now I didn't say dit. That is a common one that people like to use, especially in, you know, kind of jazz education. I find that any short note when we're talking about swing basically gets an accent for the most part. So I just like to treat all of them as dots. Okay, on to rule number four. Any note that is longer than a quarter note gets an accent and is sung as da. Now the amount of accent that these get is gonna vary depending on the song. A long whole note in a ballad gets a subtle little ping at the front of it to give some pulse but a tied over and a four to a quarter note in like a swinging tune like this gets a pretty big accent and probably also a little bit of a forte piano depending how long the note after it is. Let's look at an example. Again, all the affected notes are marked in red. Okay, just two more to go. Number five. Quarter notes that are on downbeats have to be defined. And a good jazz arranger or a good editor will make sure that if there's a lot of quarter notes on downbeats, especially at like a medium swing tune like this, you don't want to leave any question um, what those should be. They could be sideways accent, da, tenuto, do, or hot stop accent, dot. I would say most often at this tempo, they end up being dot a lot of times, but not always. I could have easily played that with a tenuto on the downbeat of three of the first measure. And any of those I could have made different choices. So really, we want to lean on what the composer has written there, or if they don't write anything, if you're playing lead, you need to decide and the rest of the section needs to follow. Okay, we made it all the way to rule number six. The highest note in any line tends to get a little bit more accent, particularly if we're thinking about an eighth note line, we're gonna think it's a da, a D-A-H. Let's check out an example of this. Now, a few of those are affected by kind of other rules. The first example, that and a four is a dot, D-A-H-T. It's both the top of the line and it's followed by a rest. And then in the second example, you can see I accented both the top of the line and the bottom of the line. I did that because there is an anticipation of those uh, beats three. That is a good example where these rules may not apply absolutely 100% of the time. That doesn't fit neatly into any of our rules. However, it's very typical when we have those offbeats that are tied over to a longer note, we think a long offbeat, that they're gonna get a little bit of an accent. If it was a short offbeat, it would get a dot, D-H-T. Okay, let's throw all this into a pile and hear how this lead part of this sounds with all this articulation. I've gone ahead and written every single thing in so you can really see how this would look on the page. I would say rarely do you have this much detail and I actually don't think that's actually helpful. Uh, most of the times we wanna think about hearing this in our head. Yes, maybe there's some detail on the page on quarter notes on downbeats, possibly if there's something that has a little bit of a question, but we really wanna be able to play this without needing any of this on the page. Okay, there you have it, our six basic rules for jazz articulation. Now, as I mentioned, again, these are not rules. I'm just using that term loosely. Don't at me on social media and say, Sean, there are no rules for this, or you missed this, you missed that. These are just our basic guidelines to get us started. There are many exceptions, and then there are many places where we have to understand these and be able to be flexible to understand what's working in a particular piece.